how's it going? Making up a radial flow filter to go into our aquaponics and also changing the plumbing around a bit, drilling out some holes. So I thought I'd bring you along and show you. Just to bring you up to speed, um, I made a filter, connected it to the aquaponics and I've come into a few issues with the uni seal. Uh, the uni seal's just not sealing nicely around the little ridges on the side of the drum. I think the plastic's just a little bit too bendable as well. Um, and the pressure of the pipe work on that uni seal is creating a bit of a leak. So, so the one I'm actually building now is made out of the same drum as the old radial flow filter. Uh, which will actually look better in the system, two drums sitting next to each other that look the same. So to begin with, it's going to be plumbed up with the 50mm or 2 inch uni seals and pipe. So down the bottom of the unit, I've left pretty much all about, I think that's about an, in, um, an inch and a half or 40mm from the base of the drum to the bottom of the hole and then I've just drilled through with the appropriate drill, um, hole saw which for this one is a 76 mil or a 3 inch hole saw. Just zap that all the way through and at the top on the opposite side I've had to cut out some of this plastic work but I've done the same as well so I consider uni seal in there nice and neat. That'll be the um, where the water flows out into the moving bed biofilter and this is where the water flows in directly from the fish tank. The plastic on this is a lot more rigid than the other one too so so what I've got to do now is just mark out the top here. I'm just going to use this as a template to mark out my lines. Try and get it as central as possible. I think that looks pretty good so just give it a bit of a mark with the um, sharpie or nico or whatever your marking pen. Then all that needed to be done was a hole drilled and the jigsaw um, run around. And the bucket will just sit in nicely like that and we can put a lid on top. So it's as easy as that. So I'm ready to put the drain to waste in the base here. I've taken it out of the carcass of the old filter I've just pulled out of the system. So what I'm doing is putting a, it's a um, two inch drain to waste, I think. Yeah, I think it's a two inch drain to waste and I've made up this little attachment. It's just a drain to waste fitting, screws on there, um, just some other bits and pieces fitted together and glued so I could screw in this little PVC tap. Um, it's just a little ball valve. I've had it laying around and these bits laying around. This is actually from the old pond. So I'm trying to recycle as much stuff as I can. So I'll just set up the drill and drill my 51 mil hole through there so we can screw this drain to waste in. So with these hole saws, I actually like to run them backwards like a lot of other folks. It just gives you a neater hole. If you run them forward, the jagged teeth can sometimes catch on the plastic and rip the job. So it's just something I like to do. It's going to collect my swarf here. Just like to um, run the knife around the edge as well, take off any of the burrs. So now the hole's drilled, I've got the drain to waste ready. I've got a washer just up on the inside and it can go through the base like so and then on the outside here I've also got another washer that I'll be putting on and then the lock nut just gets screwed into place it's pretty important that you get this seal nice and tight um, I was speaking to a chap on Facebook um, and he was saying he had to actually put a bead of silicon under his just to stop the leaking hopefully I'm not going to have a problem with these two washers that's sealing fairly flush down there. So the only way to really tell is to plumb her all up and give her a bit of a test run. So before I put on the bottom tap and fix, finish off this fittings, I want to actually put in the pipe work and the uni seals for these holes here. Um, it's just a bit hard to maneuver it around with a big spike sticking out the base of it. So all I'm doing is pilfering the parts from the one that failed. With the uni seals, it's a good thing to put a bit of a chamfer on the pipe. It just helps it push through the uni seal a little bit better. Once it's in place, you've made sure there's no um, bits of swarf stuck on the hole. It's a good idea to get a little bit of liquid soap and just run that around the outside. It just acts as a bit of a lubricant to help the pipe work go through. Now with these uni seals and the pipe work, it's, they're one directional. Once it goes in, you can't pull it back out. You've got to go all the way through. So to save any stuff ups, what I've done is I've grabbed the pipe work that will be connected to the outside of this drum, putting the pipe on the outside and then pushing it through. So I'll know exactly where to stop pushing, give myself a little bit, probably about five mil or a bit under a quarter of an inch, um, just leeway. So it's, it, it is a very easy job though. And there we go. There's the pipework pushed on the inside. And then all I have to do is push in my riser 
and away we go. So this drain to waste is just going to have this little pipe fitting hooked onto it. Just to make sure it's a watertight seal, I'm just going to run some, um, some Teflon tape around it and just screw it on and then I can fill her up and we'll see how we go. With this tape, it's good to wrap it around so it's tapered. There's a little bit at the front and there's a lot more towards the rear. That way the thread will bite in and create a more watertight seal. So now it's just a matter of screwing this on. So there we go. Now she's ready to fill up and give her a test after I close the tap of course. So there you go. She's been in place for about a week and a half now and I'm really happy. I've actually managed to add in a moving bed biofilter as well. That's a different clip. Um, to plumb this guy in, I had to enlarge the hole in the side of the tank. I used a 50mm or a 2 inch uh, uni seal this time. I did have the 40mm um, or inch and a half um, bulkhead fitting in there. I just made up a bit of a jig. It was really easy to do and I could enlarge the hole safely without stretching it so the uni seal fits nice and tight. The filter, the filter's doing its job. It's collecting solids. Um, I haven't included the figures in the clips before. Um, we've got a flow rate through the tank here of about um, 2,700 litres an hour. Uh, it's been reduced from the pump. The pump's an actually 4,500 litre an hour one. But we've got a bit of a head height with the pipe coming up around the back. And we've got a Venturi on there, so and also the age of the pump. And I tested it the other day when I put this in, and I'm running at about yeah, 2,700 litres an hour which gives this unit here a retention time of about one minute. Um, the water is staying in this bucket, or this filter, one minute before it passes through, and that's ample time to get the bulk of the large solids to settle out. Not too worried about the really fine solids, they can go to the beds, they've got extra nutrients, the worms can look after them. My main concern here is getting the bulk of the large solids out. Um, it just, just takes a bit of the load off the bed and yeah, stops that solid build up, which I've had problems with before. So I know these aren't to everyone's liking, not everyone reckons you need one of these on the system, but yeah, I'm running one. Um, for cleaning, oh yeah, for cleaning, um, I found even though the outlet is smack bang in the middle of the base, it's not drawing all the solids out. So what's happening is it's taking the solids from just around the inside and the solids around the outside are staying in there. So I'm having to take the standpipe off, give it a bit of a swirl, to get the solids moving. The problem with that is they then go spread or become suspended through the, all the water again and you've got to dump the whole lot of the filter to end up um, cleaning out the solids. So I've gone back to my jiggle siphon. You pop that in there, give it a bit of a bounce up and down and that um, creates a bit of a siphon so you don't have to suck on the end of the hose and then just running around the base picking up the solids themselves. I find once I create a siphon I have to pull this out though because the small hole or aperture in there um, does get clogged by the larger solid, so that's just something I've been doing. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Every second, third day I do that. Siphon it into the bucket and it goes out to one of the many garden beds, so as you can see, it doesn't get wasted. Um, one thing you'll notice over there is I stuffed up on the placement of the hole. Uh, those holes are really easy to plug too with a uni seal. Um, so what I had to do is drill another hole to get it to go through to the biofilter. Originally this was going to be set up running that way over there so I needed the hole opposite the inlet. Yeah so a bit of redesign, takes nothing to make a bit of a plug up and stick it through the hole. More than happy with the way she's going. Built a little stand up for her out of an old IBC cage. I bolted it onto the sleepers that the fish tanks sit on so she's not going to go anywhere. Got a uh, couple of sleepers cut off in, in, in the centre there just to take the weight and I've braced the base with some of the, um, the rods that go over the top of an IBC. So I'm more than happy with the stand and the way she's going. Um, yeah, so suppose that is pretty much all it. So there you go, there's a bit of a look at a very quickly thrown together radial flow filter. Um, the square top, I don't think I mentioned it before, you don't need to have a square bucket in the top. I'm just using them because that's what I've got on hand. Seems to work just as well as a round one, so I'm more than happy with that. A uh, round one with a lid would work just as well. Well, with the radial flow filter as a whole, a lot of people, I've read on a couple of forums and different places that um, people are down on others that use a radial flow filter. They're, you know, each to their own, seriously. Um, if you want to add one in, I really don't think it's going to take a lot of the nutrients out of the system. Um, our plants are growing fine, they're growing gangbusters, we're getting loads of fruit on the eggplant and on the chilies, all the greens are growing phenomenally well. The kangkong has to be um, hacked back at least once a week, so does the warrigal greens. 
We've got 14 fish in the system, did a bit of a harvest the other day and everything's growing fantastically so I'm not concerned. The waste we take out goes onto the soil patch and those plants down there really appreciate it as well I think so. Um, if you're running a small system, um, only with a couple of fish, probably don't need one. If you're running a DWC, it's a good idea to have a bit of a solids removal, just so the, the, the solids don't build up underneath the plants and the bottom of the trough that they're floating on. Um, it's just one of those things, saves you having to clean it out later. Also too, I had a couple of beds foul up because I, they were made poorly basically by yours truly and also my bell siphons could use a bit of a tweaking with the way that they collect water from the beds. Um, so. I had solids build up in a couple of my beds, I've done clips on it, I had a nitrite spike, so in my case I think it was a good idea, in your case, you know, read up on it, have a bit of a look around the web and see what you come up with. If you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, pop them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Other than that, I hope this has been helpful to someone out there and have a great one all. Cheers!